Horlicks, the original malt of milk. see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner seem to be having some trouble getting their new store on wheels started. They had the new stock of merchandise in the shelves yesterday and were all ready to make their initial trip over the territory when they discovered that they would have to take it back to Caleb Weehunt's blacksmith shop for adjustment. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears over at Dick Huddleston's store discussing Lum and Abner's new project. Listen, yeah, they're having a hard time getting started, Grandpap. Looks like everything is going wrong. Well, I believe it's a good idea, though. Looks to me like they ought to make a lot of money with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea, all right. Trouble is, they just built that body on it too big. Why, that thing's nearly as big as a regular store. Yeah, I know it, I know it. I told them the first time I seen it, it was way on or too big. But you know Lum, and can't nobody tell him nothing. Well, I think he realizes now that it wasn't necessary to build it so big. They've had trouble ever since they started. Here yesterday, they got it all loaded up with merchandise ready to start out. <laughs> Had so much weight on the rear end that the front end ran clear up off the ground. <laughs> well, I do know. <laughs> Had to unload all the merchandise and then drive the store back down to Caleb's blacksmith shop. Well, what do you know about that? Going to have Caleb cut part of it off there and make it shorter. Yeah, I've seen him out there at the side of Caleb's shop working on it when I come down a while ago. Well, it's just a shame that they ever built that kind of a body on it to start with. They had a good idea there. They spoiled it with that big lumbersome contraption that they let Caleb do. They should have had a body on it, about like one of these big buses that go through here. Instead of trying to build a regular store on it. Yeah, that's the funniest looking side going down the road I ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yeah, that daylight out of a fellow she coming. Yeah, like that, that porch they got on the back end there. Yeah. <laughs> they came over here yesterday to load up and... Cedric was doing the driving, and Lum and Abner both sitting back there on that porch in rocking chair, just rocking, having a time of their life as he drove down the road. Yeah, well, bound for <laughs> it. And here they are talking about driving around to some of these other towns around here with it. I don't believe they'll ever make it. Why, of course not. I didn't say anything. I just thought it was best for them to find out for themselves. But it's too high and too wide for these country roads around here. Why, sure it is, sure it is. They take up the whole road. Couldn't nobody get past them. Why not? Cutting off part of it, making it shorter, ain't going to help that none. No, well, the first trip they make in it, they'll find out there's a lot of things wrong. They wasted a lot of space in there, too, and they need all they can get. Why, sure. Got a refrigerator in there. It's about twice as big as they need. And then Lum's got a big desk and chair in there. What he calls his office. Yeah, yeah, I think Lum's sort of counting on moving all his law books in there and opening up his justice to the peace office. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he always run that in with the store, you know. Yeah, well, now, I guess that's the reason, then, that he's got the desk and chair. Yeah, but they don't need all that stuff, Richard. 
like them counters. Now, they're all right if you've got room for them, but they can get along just as well without them. Yeah, sure. Well, I hope they make a go of it. Yeah, I do, too. Special now, you know, they said if they got to do an extra well with it, they might give me a job of clerk. Or a brakeman or whatever you call it there, working on one of them. <laughs> Well, I don't know, Granddad. They haven't got a, any too much room in there now. There's three of them, counting Cedric. They not get any more on that thing, and they won't have any room for the customers. <laughs> yeah. What you order done was just buy the jot them down store back from Snake Hope. Well, they did try to buy it. But Snake wanted too much cash down. They couldn't raise a down payment. Yeah, if I can buy it now, I just might not name his own price. Snake was trying to sell it to me yesterday. Yeah, well, that Snake's going to have to close his doors over there pretty soon, I'm afraid. He's not done enough business to pay him to open the place up for him. No, and he's to blame it on the Lumen Abner, too. He is, my sure. Weren't there for all. He's doing right well with it when they sold it to him. Why, sure, yeah, they had a good business in there. Abner was running it by himself, you know, when he sold it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the trouble is, Snake don't know nothing about the snow up store business, no way. And it wouldn't help none if he did. He's so mean and honest, ain't nobody wouldn't trade with him. No. Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe that's Lum coming up out there now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they can. Must have got the store fixed. <laughs> well, they've got that stock of merchandise in the feed room back there. They'll have to come over here and load that up where they can start out. Oh, they're keeping that stuff back there, huh? Yeah, yeah. They've got to have some place to store it, you know. They can't haul it all around with them. Just to drive up here every morning and fill up the bacon food in the shelves and for the strike out, you know, and they have a complete stock every day. Yeah, there ain't no need of carrying it all with them. No, no. Well, I told them they could use my seed room back there, a part of it. I don't carry much seed during the summer anyway. You know. Oh, and Richard, there wasn't nobody else in the world do that, just you. Oh, well, I was glad to help them. They didn't have any too much capital to start this thing on. They've invested all the money they got, so I thought if I could keep their expenses down, I'd do it. Well, that was nice of you. Well, come in, Lon. Come in. Hey, gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, did you get it all fixed? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Got it to where the front end won't tilt up no more, but now then we can get the engine started. Well, I'll declare. Why, it's running all right yesterday. Yeah, I know. We left it sitting out overnight there last night over by Caleb's blacksmith shop, and somebody stole some spark plugs out of the engine. For the next day. I got so disgusted, I just walked off and left the whole business. And then it looks like we ain't had nothing but trouble with that outfit ever since we started to build it. No, no, it's a shame. Hey, can't you get some more spark plugs for it, Lon? Well, I don't know. I told Abner to see if he could get the thing to going. If he could, uh, bring it on over there. So him and Cedric trying to figure out some way to make it go now. Yeah. Uh, how much did you cut off the length of it? Uh, oh, why, we never had to cut none of it off. See, instead of cutting it off, we decided to put another set of wheels under the back end there. Another set of wheels? Yeah, she's a six-wheeler now. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll keep that back end from going down on the ground. Yeah. It just holds it up. Yeah, I believe he should have made it shorter, though, Long. That thing's too long. Well, that just gives us that much more room. Oh, it's a good eye. Caleb brought this up himself. He did. Because we couldn't find no regular automobile wheels, but Caleb had some front wheels off the old cultivator there in the shop. About the same height and all, so we just used them. You mean you've got four regular automobile wheels and two cultivator wheels on there? Yeah. Why, for goodness sake, Lum, well, that's not going to work. Well, it don't look just right having them orange wheels back there, but we couldn't find no automobile cars that sit on there. Well, anyway, that's going to be too hard to pull. Those things that sink down in the ground, man. <laughs> you can't get along with those. Well, I think most of the weight, though, is going to be on them hind wheels as regular wheels on the car. <laughs> well, wait and see. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's going to work all right. Don't look so good, but I reckon it'll have to do for now. <laughs> And I wish you fellas hurry up and get started, Lom. I'm curious to see how much business you're going to do so that I'll know where I'm going to get that job or not. Well, we'll keep you in mind, Granddad. It gets to where we can't look after everything I said. We sure put you to work. Well, I've got to find something to do here for long. I lied by this time we'd have been getting some dividends off that silver mine. I just hope Squire makes some kind of a deal while he's out there. While he's out work. Out there in Arizona, it's a mine. Well, I never even knowed he was out there. Oh, me either. Yeah, he left yesterday. Yeah, going out there to sell it, he said. Got some kind of a deal ribbed up with that fellow Worthing man that was here. Oh, the fellow came in and tried to buy it off every once, huh? Yeah, that's the fellow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he'll find Worthington in Arizona. Huh? 
Uh, hardware technician? Uh, uh, nothing. I- I'll tell you fellas something about this Worthington one of these days. What is it, Dick? You ain't heard from that investigation you've been making, have you? Well, I'm not through yet, Mom. I- I'd rather wait a few days. I'll tell you more about it in the next few days. I don't want to talk too much until I'm sure what I'm talking about. Uh, I wish I'd an old squire was going out there. I'd have told him to tell somebody what he's out there. Why, sure, get rid of the thing. He said something the other day about leaving, but I just thought he was talking. That's funny. Here I am, president of the company, and I'm the last one that ever knows what's going on. <laughs> That's right. You are president, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought when Squire let me be president, I was going to get to run things. I guess he's the president of a silver mine that way. He must not have much authority. <laughs> well, he doesn't seem to have much in this mine anyway, though. He had no more to do with it than Cedric or anybody else he bought stock with. He just goes ahead and does things without me knowing anything about it. Yeah, well, Squire's pretty good at that anyway. Well, though. for the land sake, well, look driving us out in front there. Oh, oh, <laughs> look here. oh, 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 Put the brakes on, Cedric. It's a back. Where in the world have they got rigged up there now? Let me get out there and see what's taking place. Yeah, I want to see that. Looks like a pair of horses hitched up there. That thing. That's just what it. Abner, what do you think you're doing if them horses hitched up to our new store? Well, you can figure out some way to get it to going. <laughs> I know that here we are. Here, boss. Here we are. Well. Abner and Frederick seem to have solved the engine trouble by adding two more horsepower to the rolling grocery store. for Lum and Abner and Harley, who now bid you all good night and good health.